Hi everyone, the random home cook here. Today I want to share my experience in cheese making as a beginner. I decided to make a video about what I would have liked someone told me while I was starting making cheese. I learned this art following tutorials, reading books and forums. Although I'm not an expert, I consider myself more than a beginner and I continue to read and study. I realize that sometimes information that would have made my progress faster are scattered in many sources. In this video I will make mozzarella as example recipe and I will try to collate tips and reflections I think I would have found useful to know. But let's begin. First of all, I prepare two bowls with boiled water and I wait for the water to reach room temperature. In one I add the frozen bacteria cultures and I let it rehydrate. In the second one, the liquid blender. The bottle calls for five drops per liter of milk, so about 40 drops. In terms of tools, a thermometer up to 100 degrees Celsius will suffice, a pot to contain the amount of milk used, and a mold or a vegetable strainer to put the curds in. Lastly, I need some tools like spoons, knives and other kitchen utilities. All surfaces and tools should be thoroughly sanitized and sterilized. Develop good practice is critical. Before proceeding, I sterilize the tools that can be boiled, boiling it for 20-30 minutes, and other utensils that cannot be boiled, I use food safe products to sanitize them. I wash my hands all the time and I often use vinegar to sanitize them further. I'm now making mozzarella with 8 liters of milk. I normally use the natural acidification using bacteria. As a rennet, I use liquid animal rennet. Often, in the source material I used, the cheese making process is defined as easy. And indeed, making cheese is very easy. You get the milk, the rennet, the salt, the brine, and then you make cheese. However, I found that making the cheese I want and making it consistently from one batch to another, it is anything but easy, and the experience and knowledge makes a big difference. I let the milk slowly warm up on a medium heat until it reaches 37 degrees Celsius. As beginner, I used yogurt because it is a simple, ready available source of bacteria. However, I could taste a yogurt aftertaste and the amount of bacteria within the yogurt that I add to the milk is not easy to control. In particular for mozzarella, where acidification and amount of bacteria relates neatly with the time in which the mozzarella can be stretched. I then decided to use a frozen bacteria where I can actually control way better the amount of bacteria I add to the milk. And consequently, I can finally tune how long the bacteria will take to turn the curd to the right pH for stretching mozzarella. I will talk more about these later on. Among cheeses, I think mozzarella is a good entry level fun to make and yet it has its difficulties, to be made better or at least at the same level of the one found in the shops. I add the bacteria to the milk between room temperature and around 37-38 degrees Celsius. If I'm short in time and I didn't prepare the bowls of water, I add the bacteria directly and I let rehydrate on the surface of the milk for 5 minutes and then I stir them in. I started my journey in mozzarella making with 3 liters, which I think it is a minimum because mozzarella has a low yield, around 10-15% or less. One liter makes a good size mozzarella or two smaller. This is because 
While experimenting with different venom, meat, bacteria, there are so many variables to control. And a lower amount make it easier to manage and if something goes wrong, then there is less waste. When I became more confident, I increased the quantities. With less than 3 liters, it is difficult to maintain the optimal temperature for bacteria and the process in general, but it can be done. The more milk is used and the more stable is the temperature, which is a very important factor in cheese making. I bought a notebook to make notes of the recipes, the techniques, the steps, the timing, and at the end I was adding comments on the result. I'm sorry to say the early attempts end with the word fail or not satisfactory. However, after a while, getting practice, experience and refining what works for me, kitchen and tools, I started to see improvements. Once the milk reaches the temperature, I switch off the hob and I put a clean kitchen towel or bath towel to keep it warm. I also tend to have my main cheese making season in spring and summer, when the room temperature is higher. Regardless, in winter or cold weather, I switch on the oven for just a few minutes at 50 degrees and then I turn it off to create a warm, nice place for the milk to sit. After the time has passed, if needed, I reheat the milk on the stove, if no longer at the ideal temperature. With 8 liters, I see a loss of at most 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, so no real need. Once back at 37, 38 degrees Celsius, I switch off the hob and I add the rennet and I mix well for a minute and then I stop the milk motion and I place it back in its cozy blanket or warm place for about 45 minutes. It is time to see if the rennet did its job. The milk seems unchanged at first, but the milk is no longer a liquid, more like a fragile pudding. What I look for is a clean break of the curd. As a beginner, I had no idea what a clean break was. Basically, a clean break is when you try to lift or cut the curd and it splits with a sharp well-defined edge. See how clean are the lines left even by the thick handle of the spatula I'm using? Today the milk settled very well. After the first cut is done, the curd needs to rest for another 15 to 30 minutes before performing the second cut. For many cheeses, including mozzarella, the curd is cut twice. The first cut is to detach the curd from the pot and start to release the whey, the yellowish watery part. For mozzarella, the second cut needs to turn the curd into hazelnut sized chunks. The milk is from a farm, unhomogenized, gently pasteurized. Due to its consistency and quality, I can be a little more relaxed during cut and curd handling operations. The cut of the curd and their size for what I understand is proportional to the softness and water content of the end result. These also affect the yield of the cheese. Bigger the chunks, more water content and softer is the cheese. Also more water is often related to shorter shelf life for aging. The second cut takes time and it is quite relaxing. From time to time I check if I forgot any larger chunk and in case I break it with my hand or whisk. There are specific professional tools to cut the curds, like cheese harps, but the whisk worked perfectly for me. It takes a bit longer, but works in the long run.
Once happy with the second cut, I can proceed. However, for the next step, there are various current of thoughts and opinions. One is to take the curb out and shape it immediately, or leave it in the way for some time. I tried both, and I found that leaving it to rest between 2 to 4 hours is good, if I have time. I now settled for 1 hour, and I obtained good results. This worked for me to slow down the acidification of a night. The curd will sink and will compact, releasing a lot of liquid and the bacteria will start to lower the pH. The pH is key for stretching the mozzarella. The target is around 5. Too high or too low, it will not work. The amount of bacteria and the time needs to be correct. For example, in my case, I normally make the curd in the evening, late evening, and leaving it to ripen overnight. This is why I'm happy to slow down the acidification, taking the curd out of the way earlier, and the curd will be ready to stretch in the morning. If for some reason the room temperature is lower than expected, it's fine. I will stretch it in the afternoon. Anyhow, I wait until it's ready. From 8 liters making mozzarella, I get 4 to 5 liters of whey. Now I get ready to shape the curd. I find that using a simple vegetable strainer works best for my process. However, I could use any cheese mold of the right size commercially available. I place the strainer on the top of the whey container and then I pour the curd in the strainer. The remaining whey gets collected underneath. I distribute the curd evenly and gently compress it to let out as much whey as possible. This operation provides a nice uniform shape. Using the big pot, I place two cheese molds at the bottom of the pot and I sit the strainer on top of them. This ensures enough space between the strainer and the pot, so that the curd can drain more whey and it will not be submerged in it. Then I cover everything with cling film to keep the moist and temperature as high as stable as possible. I cover it and I put it back in a switched off oven to rest. I let it rest for 30-45 minutes. The curd is ready for the first flick. I normally use a plate because the curd at this stage can break. The curd needs to be flipped three times. The second and third time, it is fine to flip after 30 minutes apart. The curd 
has lost additional weight and this gets collected at the bottom of the pot. It is now compact enough to be flipped just with one hand. After the third flip, I let it rest for about 8 hours. The following morning, I test with litmus paper or tasting a piece of curd. If I think I'm close to the right pH, I make a stretch test, otherwise I wait a bit longer. In this case, after those steps, I'm ready to stretch and therefore I cut the curd into strips to increase the surface area and heat the curd uniformly. It is time to prepare my mind and body to soccer. Luckily I have strong hands and a good tolerance to hot water, but I cannot hide that it hurts a lot. Sure, I could use thick gloves, but I found that they impaired my mobility. Nowadays I use them, but when I recorded this video, I used bare hands and thin gloves. If you decide to try without, be aware of serious risk of burns and pain. And definitely keep cold water close. Once mentally ready, I prepare three bowls. One with very cold water, I add ice if needed. In this water I add salt between 1 to 2%. For example, I use here 10 grams of salt per liter of water. I let the salt disappear and I will keep the mozzarella in this water until consumed. A second bowl that I will use to stretch the mozzarella empty. I put the curd in the empty bowl and a third bowl to remove excess water with a strainer to catch escaping curds. While I'm stretching the curds, I use a wooden spoon because when I tried using a metal spoon that I thought was easier to sanitize, the stretched mozzarella sticked to it, making the operation very difficult. So I figured out that there is a good reason why often in videos the mozzarella makers use wooden tools. I add boiling water at a temperature of about 80 to 90 degrees which will be lowered by the cold curd and pot and I let the curd to warm up a little for a few minutes Gently I move the curd and I try to compact them If the acidity is right, the operation is quite simple If the acidity is too high, past towards 4.5 the curd just disintegrates if it is too low, not yet 5, it might stretch, but it will break easily. If it is just right, as it is mine, the mass turns into one single stretchy lump. I pull gently without squeezing out the milk, otherwise I found that the mozzarella becomes a bit drier. The mozzarella surface needs to be smooth and shiny. I spent a lot of time watching videos to try to understand how experts move their hands during this process. As you can see, I take my time stretching the curds for a while. I feel the mozzarella with the fingers, assessing the smoothness and consistency. It is hard to describe, but I'm after a uniform texture of moist strings.
while I'm stretching the mozzarella, a few more thoughts about rennet and coagulation time. The time for setting the curd is often provided by the recipe, but I found that it seems calculated in function of the cheese to make and the milk flocculation time. For the mozzarella, the time results to be 3.5 to 4 times the flocculation time of the milk, which in my case is often about 11 minutes. And 11 minutes times 4 makes 44 minutes. As a beginner, this knowledge was not important, but I found out about this almost by accident, and therefore I think that a beginner should know at least the existence of the concept, or at least I would have liked to. In terms of rennet, I experimented with animal rennet in various forms, tablets, powder and liquid. I tried liquid vegan rennet and I have now settled for animal liquid rennet. During my tests, I found that I was having slightly more success with the animal rennet and the liquid form is very easy to manage, in particular for small batches. Now the water is too cold. I know because the mass hardens a bit and it doesn't move as before. I remove some water to make room for more hot water to get the proper stretch. From time to time, I plunge my fingers in the cold water bucket to have some relief. And now I shape the mozzarella. Considering the pain of my hands slowly cooking, the mozzarella are turning out not bad at all. The mass can be shaped in different types of mozzarella. I do some knots, some small mozzarella, anything that will help me to learn other techniques. And this is true, all the different shapes have different textures.
and here the end result. Before the quality check, it is better to leave the mozzarella a few hours in the fridge. The acidity should be balanced and the salt absorbed. After that, I like to leave the mozzarella I'm going to eat out, let's say for 30 minutes, so it is not too cold. You can see the various layers of stretchy goodness, very soft. They do not last more than one or two days, and I would not eat them past the fourth or the fifth day, but never lasted that long. Following the sanitization procedures and refrigeration, I think this is a reasonable time that works for me to eat them at their best. However, for specific guidance on food safety, shelf life time, please follow your local laws and seek professional guidance. Here another test in which I show how moist they are. After all, they are called Fior di Latte. If you like this video and you would like to see more, consider clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of new videos.